What is an example of the butterfly effect that happened in your life? My ex and I hadn't talked in years, having lived across the country from each other and dating other people in the meantime. There was a point where we were both single and mutual feelings were still there so we decided to give it a try again. Things went horrible, but it was one of those situations where those what if feelings would have always been there had we not tried. I mean we're talking like 10 years of history at this point. Anyways I was in my hometown, where he lived, visiting and he ended things, but asked me to stay in town for another day. I stayed, didn't hear from him at all that next day and was hurt, but it showed me how toxic our relationship had become. So that night I went to my best friend's house to say goodbye, because I wouldn't be back in town until later in the year. I told her that after all those years of being hung up on one person, I was finally ready to move on. Her response? Good, there's someone we want you to meet. They invited said person over, I'd never met or heard of him. Flash forward 2 years him and I are still together, about to move across the country with our two pups. If I hadn't been dumb enough to stay that extra night I don't think I would have gotten fed up enough to tell myself that I deserve better and I would have never been around to meet the love of my life. There are so many more dominoes that feel into place to get me to be there that night, but the biggest heartbreak of my life brought me the best thing that ever happened to me. Ro, my long term boyfriend recently ended things for the second time, and I was honestly looking for any sign to get hung up on him. But this story totally didn't go where I expected it to. Thanks for sharing. This one is pretty literal but I was walking in a state park when this iridescent blue butterfly set down on the path in front of me. I decided to squat down to get a better look at it and as I did the huge 15 featuring tree branch fell down a few steps ahead of me on the trail where I would have been had I not stopped to say oh hello butterfly. That's the first literal butterfly effect I see on this thread. Lucky you. I dropped dead at work 15 minutes after arriving. I was given CPR by co-workers and the paramedics got my heart working again. Three weeks later, I'm out of the hospital and making a full recovery. Had this happened 15 minutes earlier, I'd have been in my car and possibly killed someone. 15 minutes later, I might be walking to get coffee and drop dead in the middle of the street. This was a job I had not planned on keeping very long. As I freelance and was in the midst of a slow season. This job is also the first job to give me health insurance in 15 years. Every single thing I did in my life up until that point. Every alcoholic drink. Every cigarette in college. Every toke of pot. A night shift. And every cheeseburger. Got my heart to stop at the best possible moment. Surrounded by the best possible people. I delete my old comments for a reason my friend. I don't like to be stalked. Drunkenly agreed at a party the night before to go visit my friend's parents with him the next day in a city 200 miles away. It turned out another friend lived close by so we all met for drinks that evening and said other's friend's sister happened to be visiting him for the weekend. She came to meet us as she'd not seen me for a few years. We got drunk. Friend left early as he had work the next day. His sister didn't. And 9 years later we are married with two kids. A series of events which had one of any part not happened would have significantly altered the course of my life. Thanks, alcohol. Mum and father split when I had turned 15. Father remarried a few years later and with that I had a step family. I put a good word in for my now stepsister where I worked. She was cool so thought I'd help her out. A few months later her friend is looking for work and she puts a good work in for her. Her friend joins our workplace. I now have two children with her friend and couldn't be happier, with our own marriage to come very soon. It literally blows my mind to think that if my parents never split, I wouldn't have found my soulmate. I only skimmed your post initially and thought you hooked up with your stepsis. Read it properly again after that. Oops. Around 5 years ago I was going to live in Australia for around a year, as part of a student exchange program. I would have been able to leave for Australia earlier, but I had troubles organizing my visa. The visa couldn't come from my national government for some reason, and had to go through the German bureaucracy. The delay meant that I had to leave one week later than originally planned. I had to reschedule flights, which was a large nuisance at the time. 
The original flight I would have been on would have been flight MH17 from Amsterdam to Kuala Lumpur that was shot down with a rocket above Ukraine by pro-Russian separatists. Everybody on that flight had died. I took flight MH19 instead, thanks to the delay caused by slow bureaucracy. I would have died had I gotten my visa on time. A guy I went to school with was on that flight. He was diabetic so chose that flight so that he had a few breaks between London and Australia. A really nice guy. Such a shame. He was only 19. I had a crush on a guy when I was in 5th grade. He was a grade ahead of me. I finally told my parents about the crush. They ended up befriending Crush's parents. My dad started working for Crush's dad. My dad borrowed Crush's dad's work van for a job and went to return it and then ride his bike home. He fell off his bike during that ride and died two weeks later. My mom, a few months later, starts having an affair with Crush's dad, who was and still is married. That was 16 years ago and it's still going on. Guy blinks twice meme gif. Kind of more my husband's story, but still interesting. His family moved to Canada when he was very young. Every year, they would send him to swim camp, but one year, when he was about 10, something went wrong and he was mistakenly enrolled in hockey camp. His family was from a country where ice skating wasn't a thing and they hadn't embraced the whole Canadian culture of hockey. Not to mention that 10 years old is pretty late to be starting skating, let alone playing hockey. So they tried to switch him to another camp, but the mistake was noticed far too late and every other camp was full. It was hockey camp or nothing. So they decided to send him this one year only. Except that my husband ended up loving hockey and being quite good at it, and begged to go back the next year. From then on, he went to multiple hockey camps a year and started playing on a team. Fast forward many years and I'm out of province staying at a hotel for a hockey tournament my brother was competing in. I go down to the hotel pool and it's pretty busy as a lot of other families are staying there for the tournament. I end up talking with this one guy and we hit it off and are inseparable for the rest of the tournament. I even risked disownment and cheered when he scored against my own brother. The tournament ends and we stay in touch. Fast forward many years again and we're married, with my husband having made a career of playing professional hockey, all because he was signed up for the wrong sports camp. Six years ago I decided to stay home instead of going to class because I was feeling sick. I was bored out of my mind and opened the app store on my iPad to look for a game to download. For some reason I still don't know, there was a karaoke app in the recommended section. I had never done karaoke, never sung in front of anyone before or let anyone hear me sing. For that matter, it took me about 4 months just to gather the courage to actually use it and sing because I've always been self-conscious about my voice. I made a lot of friends and sang a bunch. One of these friends showed me a song. Just because it was in Spanish, my first language, from a user I didn't know or follow, I knew the song. But I never liked it so I didn't give it much thought and didn't sing it. The next day I remembered about it and said frick it, I'll sing it anyways just because it's in Spanish. As soon as I heard her voice I melted and fell in love with it. She thanked me for joining and that was it. Fast forward to today, I married the woman with the Spanish song I almost didn't sing. Moved to another country, adopted a cat and I'm happier than I've ever been. I'm still amazed that the simplest decision I made out of boredom changed my whole life. When I first applied to a community college, they rejected me because I had only partially completed high school. This was a special college for adults and you didn't need a full high school diploma and I had misread how much I needed to have completed, so I gave up on education, again, seeing as I had been nothing but a failure in academia when I used to go to school. My mom was having none of it. She called the school and somehow convinced them to let me in. Probably told them about my crippling depression and how much I needed this. It turns out I wasn't bad at this academia thing. It was 7 years ago and I'm finishing medical school next year with all of my research and hopefully residency and neurosurgery after. I also met my so at this school as she was visiting her friend who I went to class with, and we have a beautiful son together. Had my mom not decided to make that phone call, I would be living an entirely different life. If I would be living at all, I wasn't kidding about that depression. It was quite severe. I always think about how I nearly missed meeting my husband if my choices had been slightly different. I went to university, and they had enrolled me on the wrong course. 
I left my tiny town to go to a big city 5 hours away, the course I had been enrolled on all I lost it a year and I had no choice but to go back home. I went home, my mother told me I had a week to find a job or freak off, so I found a job as a carer, had never done this in my life, it was a quick job with a quick start, and still fricked off. This care job meant I lived with people who needed 24 hours care for weeks on end. I didn't do small stints because I didn't have a car. The last lady I was with had passed away and they needed me to go to another who was just down the road from me, and didn't need a live in, so it worked well. I'd sit with her for 8 hours a day. I remember laughing at her last name because it was just odd. Little did I know 5 years later I'd be marrying her grandson and gaining the weird name lol. A good friend of mine is only alive today because I sat down with him at a party and we got drunk together. I'd never met him before and I dunno. Just sat down with him and cracked open a beer. Turns out he'd recently lost his father too and we bonded over the meaninglessness of existence. Years later he told me he'd planned to kill himself until I'd said nothing matters as long as you have beer and good company. 17 years later we're still here. This happened the other day. I went to go pick up some weed from my buddy. As I'm driving back home he calls me asking if his keys are in my truck. I tell him to hold on I'll pull over and look and call him back. I get off the highway. As I'm getting off the highway the car ahead of me but to the left merged into my lane and clipped the person ahead of me causing an accident. If I had stayed on the highway I would have been involved in that accident most likely. My weed dealer losing his keys in my truck led to me not being in a wreck. He sorted you out and saved you from a car accident. Quit my boring office job and turned down a job offer from me 5 in London to go live in Australia after visiting for a few days and loving it there. There was an issue with my visa which meant it expired 2 hours before I landed and was invalid. I had to fly to another country to get a new one so I flew to New Zealand but the backpacking hostel I was going to stay in was overbooked. They offered to put me up in an Asian hostel down the block and I agreed because I just wanted to get my visa and get back to Australia. I applied for my visa online as soon as I got to the Asian hostel. While I was there I met a super hot Japanese girl. We tried to communicate but she couldn't speak English and I didn't know any Japanese. So the next day I bought a Japanese phrase book to chat with her. We went hiking, to bars, the beach, the movie theater and 3 weeks later I got my visa and she came back to Australia with me. I got a job selling didgeridoos on the Gold Coast after a stint in Brisbane and she went back to New Zealand after 3 months because she only had a tourist visa. At the end of the year my boss at the didgeridoo place offered to sponsor me for a new work visa but the Japanese girl was asking me to meet her in Tokyo. So I quit the didgeridoo job and flew to Japan. I spent 6 months with a girl in Japan as a tourist and met her mate's father who was a karate master. He offered to teach me karate so I got a new visa for that and stayed. Later on I married the girl, had kids, got a job at a private high school and bought a home in Tokyo. All because I was 2 hours late getting from the UK to Australia. You again. I love it when you pop up and tell this story. My dad was working with this woman. And her husband had a small business and was looking for cheap office help. They talked about their kids while working. And dad mentioned I'm good with computers. This woman's husband was basically looking for someone who can type and follow directions. Lady asked my dad if I might be interested in a job. I interviewed. Got hired. Over the next 3 years they basically taught me accounting on the job. I went to college for accounting. But ended up switching majors. Continued to work at this place through all of college. Handling the busy season by myself and doing low level IT stuff for them during the slow season. Graduated, moved to another city and got an accounting job, and have slowly progressed from pun to manager, and now to teacher. I'm currently making 4 times what I thought my max salary would be, grew up in a small town and had no intention of leaving, and working from home. All because my dad happened to work with this woman and was chatting about how I am good with computers. Set me up for life. And the college I went to, picked it because my abusive boyfriend said I wasn't smart enough to get in. Not only was I accepted, I got a better scholarship package than he did, ended up with a good degree from a great school, and met my husband there, all because I rage applied and got in. Abusive boyfriend also helped set me up for life. 
he's in jail now, awaiting trial for drug charges. Nothing to do with the story, but please share in my schadenfreude pie. I have so much I can't eat at all. Yay for schadenfreude. Got out of a 4 year relationship when I finished college which meant moving out of the shared apartment. I was living in Honolulu where the cost of living is abysmal and as a recent graduate I didn't have a stable job yet. So all I could afford was a tiny place I shared with two other girls and went through the recovery stages wonders after a serious breakup. My friend eventually convinced me to try Tinder but I kept ending up in the worst dates so I deleted the app and gave dating a longer rest. But months later I was ready to try again and got back on Tinder. My first match I thought he was nerdy but sweet looking. He said he was finishing a course in accounting so I assumed he was a student and agreed on a date. The only thing was I forgot to set my parameters again on the app. As a 22 year old, I hadn't wanted to date someone much older than me. Had a kid. Or was in the military. So cue meeting the dude and we hit it off. He didn't try to be deceptive. He shared he had a son, his job, and later to our shock figured out the age difference I somehow blanked out on that part of the profile. When he dropped me off I learned I was living down the street from him and had been using the bus stop in front of his. Shopped in the same grocery store, had the same default restaurant, etc. So my butterfly effect was not paying attention on an app to finally meet my husband. He wasn't right on paper for me. I should have ran into him much sooner but we finally met thanks to a simple mistake. We got married quickly and living the best life now that we found each other. TLDR. Was careless with Tinder. Ended up married. This is adorable. My husband and I have a similar story. Our age difference is higher than I thought it'd be. And we knew a lot of the same people but never met. I wish you and your husband all the happiness in the world. Internet stranger. While in high school I came across a post in an online forum that mentioned a university in another country. Looked up the place and immediately found a course that I found interesting. After finishing high school a couple of years later, I moved there. The course turned out to be completely not for me and I do something else now, but have been in the same country for 7-8 years. Wondering what life would be like if I wasn't clicking around on some gaming forum around 10 years ago. In high school the drummer in our jazz band unexpectedly quit and my music teacher knew I played drums and asked me to fill in. I reluctantly agreed because I hated jazz at the time. I'm now a student at Berklee College of Music majoring in jazz composition. Sounds like when I was about to quit playing sax until my director in elementary asked me to take private lessons and referred me to a well-known teacher in my region, and who's still my teacher today, and now sax is a really big part of my life. Listening to the Joe Rogan podcast when I was at an all-time low. Brian Redburn of all people mentions Tinder. I think. Yes. I should try it. Have some casual sex will make feel better. Five years later. Wife and two kids. LOL you wanted to have some fun and ended up settled down in life. Friend told me to play TF2 8 years ago. Randomly got matched to a server. There was this guy who kept thanking me for healing him and he was the only nice person I met so I went back to that server later. It turned out he was a regular. We became friends. And soon I was logging on every day hoping he would be there. I was like 13. He happened to live in the same county in California I was born in, even though I moved to Maine at the age of 2. We formed a group of online friends and eventually I got to meet him 2 years later at a convention. We started dating despite the distance, and kept dating through high school, with visits once or twice a year. He introduced me to all his high school friends. Right after high school, I got cancer, lymphoma. My few high school friends were gone for college and I never got to make any for the few weeks I was in college. But my boyfriend and our shared friends were still there for me, the same way they always had been, even when I was in the hospital for a month. They made that time a lot easier. An older man named Farrah McGovern decided to try and cross the railroad tracks. But he was too slow. Another younger man tried to save him and both ended up getting killed. That younger man's widow remarried and eventually had my wife's great grandfather. My kids exist because somebody tried to cross the tracks when they shouldn't have. My mom died of a sudden brain aneurysm a month before my 13th birthday. My dad didn't know what to get me as a present. So he got me like, 
6 prepaid horseback riding lessons at a local barn despite me never having really ridden before and having a non-horsey family. Yep, I'm now 30, I'm a multiple world champion equestrian, and I own a ranch and 8 horses. There is a whole lot of stuff in between, but if my mom hadn't of died that day at work I imagine my entire life would be different. I'm so sorry about your mother, that must have been difficult at that age. Your story is extremely interesting to me though and I'm glad that you obviously found your calling and hopefully are living your life to the fullest. Switching my spring sport from t-ball to lacrosse all the way back in first grade, I found the college I will be attending this fall through lacrosse recruitment. I never would have heard about this school otherwise. It's a small school that's 10 hours away from my hometown and I am absolutely thrilled to be going there. I quit my security supervisor job because I got a job at a casino. The casino laid me off due to the expansion not happening. Needed a quick job, so I went to my former employer to see if I could get any security post. As I went in the door, a guy was being escorted out by my former boss. I asked him if I could get a job and he said that I could have my former position started right now. The guy he was throwing out was my replacement and was being fired for stealing Twinkies from the production line at the hostess plant where we had a security guard contract. My new first assignment was a bank escort for a manager at a branch office for a large company. After a few months, he told me about an entry level management job and he helped me get in. I still work at the company and I have just started my 23 year. I will probably retire in just 5 more years. Now the reason I worked security at all though was because I had a pen with me one day. I went to the local mall to apply for jobs after high school. I stopped at the security office first and they needed a dispatcher. They had a rule that you could only apply if you had your own pen. Shows planning or something like that. I had a pen and I got the job. First job I ever applied for I got because I had pen. Since I had security work experience it led to security jobs all through college. So having the pen put in the right place for when the guy stole the Twinkies. They had a rule that you could only apply if you had your own pen. Shows planning or something like that. That's some boomer crap right there. I was in NYC for work and staying in lower Manhattan. It just felt like it was too far from work. That's all I was there for. I was too busy for anything fun. Plus I've been to NYC numerous times before. So one night I just decided to move hotels closer to the office. The next morning in the new hotel I overslept and didn't wake up until about 9am. I made the switch on the evening of the 10th of September, 2001 and had been staying at the Marriott World Trade Center. I quit a fleet and stow, equivalent to a guild in other MMOs, because they were starting to stagnate. Later, I was on a planet in game. Some guy invites me to a fleet. I accept. Other people he'd recently asked to join were in fleet chat. One of them was struggling with a mission. I offered to team up and help. It was fun. We played more missions and talked more. We talked in the in-game chat so much we ended up just ditching the game and using WhatsApp. We talked every day, and became good friends. I hated my birth name and couldn't decide on a new one. She kept using my in-game name to avoid making me uncomfortable. It stuck and became my new name. We talked about my home life. She offered a place to stay to get away from it all. I got kicked out and moved in with her. She became my girlfriend. TL. DR. Quit a guild in an MMO. Ended up with a new name and my first. And current. Love. I hope your new name isn't evil ginger santa. When I was a kid. My dad got me a puppy without checking with my mom first. She was furious, of course, but eventually bonded with the dog, and loved her. The dog died of cancer just before her 8th birthday. My mom said absolutely no more dogs, ever. Within 2 weeks she had adopted a sweet mutt from the local animal shelter. Shortly after, I brought home a mutt of my own. Her dog was female and mine was male. She complained constantly about my dog, because he was too big. He weighed 45-50 lbs. About 4-5 years later, my dad had what we would later find out was a seizure in his sleep, and stopped breathing. My mom's dog woke her up frantically barking, and nudging my dad's hand. My mom gave my dad a good shake and he started breathing again. His eyes were open, but he was not responsive. Mom came barreling down the stairs to get me, and my dog comes with us. He actually passes us as we're going down the hall. 
and takes a running leap into my parents room from the doorway and lands on the bed about 7 feet away. He puts one paw on either side of my dad's face and began licking his face, from chin to forehead. My dog was not a licky dog, and this was totally out of character for him. A moment or two later, my dad responded and said get off of me, you silly hound while gently pushing my dog to the side. My boy stopped immediately, lay down on the other side of the bed, watching my dad closely. It took a while to get a diagnosis, but the response from the animals made them look for seizures first. He's fine now, seizure free and no meds. But if we hadn't gotten our first dog 20 years ago and lost her young, leading my mom to the shelter to find the next dog, and me to where I found my boy, my dad would have been dead for the last 13 years. Both of the dogs are gone now, and lived long, happy lives. We don't deserve dogs. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.